Welcome to another episode of Frugal It Out. Today I'm going to teach you how to make these cute little mirrors on the frugal, on the cheap. So I took a week off last week and just survived <laughs> like everyone else and then got back to it. This is a project I've been putting off a really long time, but it actually did not take as long as I thought it would. Once your wood was cut and stained, man, it was it assembled really quickly. So if you like these for above your bed, watch the rest of this video. Here was my original inspiration that I found on Pinterest from Shanty to Chic Sisters. I love them. Uh, this has been on my board forever and I just love the look of these. I was going for a rectangle shape, but I just could not find mirrors anywhere in the right size that was a rectangle. So I went with square and I'm really happy I did because my wall isn't a really large wall or a tall wall above my bed frame. So the 12 by 12 mirrors that I found at Lowe's was a perfect fit for my wall and my bed. Step one, we have our supplies. You can get a six pack of mirrors from Lowe's for $10.98. You'll need uh, eight boards to make your cuts, screw eyes, the chain, and the stains. So if you have none of these materials at all, it's gonna come around to about $49, so $8 per mirror if you're making six of them. Here's what it looks like. A six pack of mirror comes in a little box. Here's your wood. Go pick out the straight ones. Here's your screws to hang your chain from. Here's your chain. I like this antique brass one. Stain number one, classic gray. Stain number two, special walnut. Hindsight, I would have done my cuts differently. Because my mirrors are 12 by 12, I made my wood frame 12 by 12, but because it wasn't perfectly straight, it leaves this little gap around the mirrors. So I would have made my wood frames a little bit smaller. Here are the measurements for how you should cut your wood so it works out perfectly. If you are making six mirrors, then you want 12 pieces of wood that are 11 and 3 fourths inches, and another 12 pieces of wood that are 13 inches. There we go. I'm done. I made all my cuts. I did an extra one over here just because I had an extra piece in case one of them is like bowed or stains funny or I screw up. So, all right, let's get these st well, sanded, stained, and put together. My favorite stains coming at you. One coat, classic gray, immediately followed by a little bit of special walnut just to warm up the gray and give you a really beautiful drift woody finish. So I put on one coat of classic gray and then immediately just add a little bit of special walnut over the top to warm it up. And then I allow it to dry for about 24 hours before I started assembling my frames. I have my wood piece together ready to go. So I'm gonna put these three together because they're all kind of swirly. And these three together because they're a little bit darker gray. It's just how the stain worked out. I also picked the prettiest side to put up that you can see and just make sure it all kind of looks normal and blends together. I'm gonna nail gun them together now. All right, I thought I would show you, not in fast forward, how to put this together. So figure out your wood. So you have, ooh, there's like a bug back there or dirt, dirt, so that you have the sides out that you like, and take a square against a baseboard, and line it up, and then I found I do actually need two nails in each one to make it sturdy enough, so I do one below. wonkier than the other ones. Oh well. Okay. Then spin it around.
actually is going so much faster than I thought it would. I don't know why. I thought this part would take forever, but not very hard. Did you just get it going? off kind of flip it upside down Ooh. yeah it's not the straightest wood I've ever seen in my life but hey it's cheap okay so you have your frame you're gonna flip it over ugly side up so you can attach the mirror I just ran out of white duct tape. <laughs> so I still have lime green. So I'm gonna go with lime green. Okay. That's pretty squared up actually. So mm -hmm. framing. <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but works for me. Good amount on the wood. Tight. Spread it out. I was kind of surprised. Actually, I wasn't sure if this was going to stick very well to the stain. And my stain has only been curing or whatever stain does, drying for less than 24 hours, so. Mm. The nice thing about this too is because it's duct tape, it won't mess up the paint on your wall, you know? There's like no rough edge from the mirror. It's just kind of smooth. Oops, well, that was not ideal. <laughs> My other ones were smoother. Oh well. Booyah. Not too shabby. And I checked when it's against a white wall, you can't see the green duct tape coming through. I got them all done. I'm now gonna go out to the magical shed. There are bullets everywhere. To see if I can find little eye hook screws so then I can have something to attach my chain to and hang them up. Magical shed just got more magical because my dad just moved all his stuff in here because he's getting ready to move. So the question is, can I find little eye screws in here. Surely I can. Just a moment. Yes, which is what I was looking for, but they're kind of big. So, I don't know. Let's take them in and go see. I forgot. I had just bought these for the dining room light fixture. <laughs> I don't know if they have enough. I guess we'll see. So to attach your eye screws, you absolutely want to attach them in the back of the frame because if you attach them in the middle, the whole thing will like tip forward. Um, so attach them towards the back. You're gonna wanna screw down in a little pilot hole first so you don't split your wood. Also, I chose to have, <laughs> hello, my cross beam, the short one on top, because, okay, if you think about it, your nails are going in like this, so the weight is being pulled up against your nails versus if your long piece was here the weight is being pulled up on these nails that are going down and it would eventually over time maybe slip out I don't know. <laughs> so after the screws then I pulled my chain apart a little bit I need to like 
clamp it back together. I just haven't. And I did eight up, one in the middle, eight down. Um, I had enough chain to do three of these. I did my dining room a light fixture with it. So actually, and I, I still had some leftover, so I haven't finished my other three mirrors. The reason why I did six mirrors is I made three for a friend. So might as well do something nice, a gift, or you could sell them and make all your money back. <laughs> so I was fortunate that technically, kind of, these mirrors were free for me because I already had everything. I had the chain from my dining room light fixture. I had the wood out in the shed from, actually I disassembled my teepees from the birthday teepees, a couple of them that I didn't use. I already owed the stain. Um, I had the eye screws from the dining light fixture too. So lucky me, if you do a lot of projects, you just have stuff that sits around eventually. Just kidding, I forgot. I did have to buy the mirrors specifically for this project. So you get a six pack of mirrors from a from Lowe's for only $10. So that's why I just made six, because why not? What else am I gonna do with them? You already have all the supplies out, everything, it's a lot faster, just do it all one time. So I did. Here you have beautiful decoration for behind your bed. Also, if you want to, this was Sharpie shiplap. I actually did this with pencil, but you can use Sharpie. Go watch that video. Thank you for watching another episode of Frugal It Out. I hope you're having a great week. Stay safe. Don't forget to, don't forget, <laughs> don't forget to hit like, subscribe. <laughs> Cannot wait to get back together with Carissa and we can do some group projects again, but um, I hope you love this one. Super cheap, super fun, a beautiful solution for what do you put over your bed? Have a great one. Bye guys.